Hello and welcome to another edition of Discover Love Academy. I am Jacqueline, the professional matchmaker for Discover Love Matches and creator of Discover Love Academy. And I'm really excited because we're on to our third quarter, so it's been wonderful to learn from all of our experts and coaches over the months throughout this year. And we are so blessed because we get a chance to hear from another amazing expert. And I just really want this expert to introduce yourself, jump in and dive in because we've got so much to cover. Whenever we get talking about this amazing topic, we have so many details <laughs> that need to be heard. So it makes it really exciting. So Ashley, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're doing and uh, why you're part of Discover Love Academy. Well, thank you for having me today, Jacqueline. I really appreciate it. Hello, everyone. My name is Ashley Rota. I am the founder of Iconic Details, and I work as a persona stylist, which means I blend personal branding with wardrobe styling. But Jacqueline usually emphasizes my work in wardrobe styling in these lectures for you. So today we um, are just kind of hitting it off and talking about some of the things about how love and style might be able to help you transition into the spring season. So there's a few things that we were gonna cover and we're always amazing when we got off topic. So you never know what we'll cover today. Exactly. And that's what this is all about. What's so exciting is, Style is actually so crucial and in its own kind of way, we have a brand of who we are and how we represent ourselves and what are we known for? How to become unforgettable? And yes, we have to do that in work, but we also have to do that in love and dating. It's a competitive market out there and there's a lot of people, but honestly, there's a ton of people that freaking all look the same and all mushed together. And I notice that when I host events and I'm trying to meet a new person, I'm like, what makes you different? How, do I, how am I going to recognize you when you come in the door? And it is really powerful. Like, what's your entrance? What's your presence? Or are you looking like every other person that just walked in and I'm going, do we miss you? Did we catch you? Did we see you? How do you blend in with the group? So right off the top of your head, what are some of the things that you find make somebody notice in a positive way? Yeah, so um, I think one of the things that we're going to talk about is this whole idea of attracting a mate today, right? And so, you know, there's so many different things. I mean, the things that we can't change are the things like our mannerisms and how we speak and the tone that we speak. But I think as far as clothing wise, and when you're really putting yourself together, the truth is we're all branding ourselves and we're all creating our image. The second that we step out of the shower and we put on clothes, we adopt kind of the the characteristics of that outfit, if you will. So it's obviously very different if someone were to show up to one of your workshops in their pajamas versus if they show up and they're in a beautiful suit or a beautiful dress and they've really put effort into what they're wearing. So a couple of things that I just wanted to point out is spring is so much fun to play with color. So I wanted to talk about a pop of color. So this idea of using, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a bright color, but I'm just saying a color to, I like thinking of it like you're a flower and you're going to attract the bees. So Ooh, be like, I like that. Visible, right? And just like, how can you get their attention? And I know my manicurist is always playing with sparkle because she thinks boys love sparkle. So it's always like, how can we, you know, that little thing out of the corner of your eye, maybe it was someone's lipstick. Their earrings were really powerful. Their their shirt, their pants, whatever it is, maybe it's their fingernails, that one element that just has that pop of color that will attract people. Now, I did a little research, and whether you want to be a rebel or not, according to Pantone, they set some of the colors for spring, and it's looking like cherry red, lemon yellow, rose pink, turquoise, violet, and anything that's kind of that muted, sun-washed colors. So think of it's like really vibrant, but you mute it down just a little bit. So if you're wanting to play along with everybody else, you could totally rock those colors. <laughs> and if you're wanting to be independent and be your own self, think about colors that might represent you. So maybe it's, you know, you're really cheerful and bright and you want to do that. Maybe you just want to play with mixing and matching neutral tones. Just reflect who you are. And if a pop of color is not your thing, don't try and make it your thing. <laughs> just always comes off kind of weird and, and inauthentic. But that would be my first one is the pop of color. The Go second ahead. thing would be think about an accent area. So when we get dressed, especially in spring, oh my gosh, everyone be very careful about this because spring means it's warmer outside. So we're showing more of our um, 
skin, right? Our arms are out, our legs are out. <laughs> and that's Be true. careful, people. This is where you start getting into the uh, too much too soon category. Really pick an accent area. Maybe today you're going to show off your arms. Maybe you want to show a deep V and the, your arms will be covered. Maybe you want to just show off your legs. Pick one. It's always a really good rule. Just pick one, accent it well, and rock that area. Because yes, it's hot, but honey, I don't want to see it all. Not yet. Right. Isn't that so. the truth? And it is that confidence when you do pick your one, it allows for a focal point. And as we've talked before, you know, sometimes it's that necklace piece, it's that conversation, mm -hmm. it's an outfit. And it is having something for someone to focus in on. I've talked to people and they have so much on them or a bright neon shirt and it's all over the place that I'm like, I'm getting a headache and I'm trying to talk with you. It's really hard to find a way to focal point in. So I'm glad that you didn't say neon was in. <laughs> that is yes. in. It may what? or may not be, but I'm not preaching it. So. Right. <laughs> exactly. I was like, please people, it's a little They're sensory my overload. Or if you wear it, just you're too busy. You have too many pieces of jewelry. You have too many things. So you always talk about the perfect 10 and like, what is it? How to put that together? And, and I think it's great for us to always touch base on this because people need to stop and think, what are my points? Where am I going? Do I have too little? Do I have too much? What's my style? So dive in and talk a little bit more about this because you've even had people stop you and tell you and you don't even, they haven't even been like a client. It's just they know that there's a balance. I think some people like symmetry. They like something that shows that there was thought to it versus like a mad dash grab and you're like, well, I just felt like all this jewelry but nothing went together. Yeah, I think it's really fun to just have a simple way to put it all together because sometimes people are very intimidated by fashion and they think that there's just so much to it. They just want to throw on a t-shirt and run out the door. And the truth is when you throw on a t-shirt and you run out the door, that's the statement that you're making to the world. Like, I just don't care. So I think the very first element of how to look like a perfect 10 is really think about, as we're talking about relationships and dating, let's think about where are we going? So think about, you know, just what, are, what do you have planned for the day and what statement do you want to make throughout the day in presenting yourself as well as the next phase is the perfect 10. So once you know where you're going, once you know the statement that you want to make, the next element is counting yourself. Everything that you put effort towards gets one point. So if you've done your hair, that gets a point. If you've done your face, now this can either be full makeup or just moisturizing or a clean shave, whatever it is, that gets a point. And you just count. So like your hair, one, glasses, two, face, three, earrings, four, pop of color, five, top, six, pants, seven, my shoes would be eight, I'd have a ring on nine, or maybe my fingernails are done, that could be nine, and maybe my bag is 10. The point of this because you want to count yourself from head to toe. I almost said head to tail. <laughs> Love these bloopers, people. Head to toe. And then each one of those gets a point. Now, for people that are more minimalistic and a simpler style, I like to say like a six or a seven is probably where you're going to want to aim. So instead of being a 10, you want to be a seven. Um, men, too, you kind of fall under that seven element. If you have more than 10, really contemplate, is this element adding to my outfit, screening my outfit, or really just distracting from it. And maybe take something off till you get back down to that 10. If you've counted that um, you're at 15, it's just time to go home and change. Like yeah. just don't try it. You're but, off balance. Restart. Yeah. And a couple of questions I'll get, you mentioned this earlier, is like layering necklaces. That counts as one because you've created like a new necklace by layering them or something. Or, you know, bangle bracelets that kind of like a chunky bracelet, things like that, that are on your wrist, that still counts as one. So it's not like counting each earring or something like that. Exactly. I hope I'm explaining that okay. Oh, no, totally. And it is a little extra step. You know, it's like, like, I mean, my little necklace here, I actually clip it in the back so it's higher up because it fits better for this look. Whereas other looks, it looks good when the necklace is down. So, you know, sometimes it's just a little, a little change, a little adjustment to fit the attire that you're wearing, but it's yeah. taking taking those steps because I noticed that when somebody walks into an event, which is like how they're walking into a date, 
if they have taken a few moments to stop and look in the mirror, and my number one question for clients all the time, do you have a full length mirror? Do you actually know what you look like? I guess ever since many years ago when I walked out the door with two pairs of shoes that were matching, but one was navy blue and one was black, I learned you need to stop and look in front of the mirror. But Absolutely. taking that time, it makes a difference. It just ties the look together. And what do you find are the most common things that people are missing in tying the look together when like they've gone out. I like for men, I notice men don't wear a belt or they wear a belt that blends too much with the pants that there's nothing distinct. Yeah. I was kind of observing that the other day. So I was thinking about that. What are some of the things that you notice men and women, just pieces that they're missing when they put their outfit together? I would say it's, um, Probably like accessorizing. So let's break it down men and women here. So women, ladies first. Ladies, I would say like, it's really, you know, yes, you have a top on and a bottom on or maybe a dress on, but then it's like your dress. They don't go the next level of, accessories can be anything, whether it's like carrying a nice looking journal with you over to the cafe. It could be um, actual jewelry accessories. Maybe it's just that your nails have been nicely polished, that you've groomed and your hygiene is good. You've used a body mist, something like that. It's, it's more than just getting dressed. I would say the next step level is probably that statement, um, sentimental item that you briefly mentioned. Yes. Maybe just If you're going on a date, you're trying to start conversation. So when you're picking your accessories, pick it with intention. Um, I wore a moon necklace the other night and somebody complimented me on it. And I said, oh, it's funny. I haven't thought about this for years, but growing up, I collected moons, you know, crescent moons, full moons, right. whatever it was. And that created a conversation. So do you have grandma's heirloom earrings? Do you have, you know, a bracelet that you earned from, you know, making a certain level in sales? Like wear something that has conversation mm -hmm. in it and can, you know, benefit the date, I would say. Also, I noticed that shoes are kind of a thing. I'm not saying that you have to be in pain, but like if they have holes or the sole is worn off or like when you're walking in heels, it sounds like the nail, like tink, tink, tink. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah, that's the worst. <laughs> like these are like yeah. some things that I'm just like, oh, now I know I'm highly attuned to these because it's my business, but I think subconsciously everyone is yes. like, don't wear your shuffle shoes. So, you know, the ones that you kind of like shuffle in like slippers. Yeah. God, I hate that. Like, I'm like, <laughs> pick up your feet. You're on a date. Exactly. Oh. Totally. <laughs> I always say that to my dad, but he did have hip replacement surgery, so it's hard. But it's so interesting when you're around somebody doing that, you're like, dude, pick up your feet. You got You know, your own body needs you to pick up your Yeah, feet. and then think about what your date's thinking. Like, you sound yeah. like a sloth. Like, you're just, kush, 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 kush. It's like, come on. Um, men, on the other side, I would say men, yeah, it's just pulling that outfit fully together. Definitely think about your socks. I know you don't think about it, but every woman sitting with you is looking at your socks because oh, when totally. you sit on the bar stool with us and your pants come up and we now see your socks, I would rather see, like, some cute pattern of some right. kind or some crazy like personality like golf clubs or you want to show me your personality through your socks versus like the white ones that are like for gym wear like oh ouch yeah. those are the worst do not do not do not the white socks on a man like, the not. white socks like i mean come on boys like we have ouch. navy and we have black and brown and all, taupes and all these other amazing colors now mm -hmm. i would even love if you had one blue and one black that because you be tried, and I would love you even more. I'd be like, yeah, they've it. I've met so many people literally commenting on their socks. They're sitting next to me at a bar. It's and okay. ones, I remember a gentleman years ago, I was just about to head into a networking event, and I just wanted to grab a glass of wine before I went in. And this gentleman was so funny because we're talking, and I was just having a great conversation. And then he goes, well, um, let me just tell you more. And he pulls up his pant leg, and it had a really funny saying. Well, it trajectory to the point where I was late for my event because it turned into such a great conversation. Yeah. I think this is where people are missing the beat of a conversation starter. They're missing an opportunity, which, which you can be total straight lace conservative dress, but then you have this attitude socks that can totally turn the direction and yeah. bring up the personality. Yeah, and I think the next thing too is to remind men that there is um, a spectrum of shoes. There's dress shoes that you wear for work, and then there's gym shoes that you wear to the gym. There's, you know, I, I want to uh, 
I want to slowly introduce this idea that there are more shoes in the spectrum of shoe wear. <laughs> so like there are things such as like a casual shoe um, that's, you know, maybe it's like one of my favorite ones. Um, they are leather, but they'll have like different color laces in them and things. And they're just like one step down from that full dress shoe that you wear. Right. Um, but it's, it's still like a, a casual tennis shoe. I don't want to say that, but men all accept that a little bit better. I'm just saying loves. Um, but you know, play with those shoes because that's another way to keep you comfortable as well as your date comfortable. Um, and then for men too, I would say your jackets, you know, think about what in the summertime, especially it gets cooler in the evenings. Is there like a light sweater? I'm not saying, you know, that you have to be like polo sweater, you know, right. Or, whatever. I'm just saying, think about the jacket that you might drape over your date shoulders. Mm -hmm. You know, don't wear wool, please. Yes. That, that's exactly so like we just get up in there, like shake it off. Like, mm -hmm. right. Sorry, um, that didn't work. Cause that leads totally into our next conversation that we're talking about is that whole layering springtime, fun time, get out time, have a good time. You know, what, what is it like you go from that first location and then you're like, this is going well. Now I want to go take a walk on the boardwalk or I want to go, you know, to a place a few stores down. How do we layer up so we still look good, but we're not melting? Yeah. So I like to say, you know, this is prep enough so that you're prepared for the date, but not so over prep that you look like you're about to move in. Um, so I would just say things like if, you know, you already know what your plan is ish, right? Like, you know, if you're going to go to a movie and then walk around for cocktails after, or if you're going on a walk and then maybe you might go downtown later. So the point is, if you're in a casual pair of shoes, I like to always say put a pair of dress shoes in the back seat because it's so fun to just run to the car and automatically go from hike to happy hour or vice versa. Um, I think that's one is shoes. Mm -hmm. Good. Layer would be, um, you know, your pamper pack. That's what I call it. So that, you know, what can you touch up your lipstick? Can you add a fragrance? You know, just keep like Nordstrom's is a great example. Nordstrom's gives away um, samples of perfumes all the time. Just get like a little sample. They're literally this big yeah. and just throw it in like your zipper pocket of your work bag or something and just freshen yourself up. Um, or what's one way that you can just like freshen yourself up? It, it may be breath mints or something. No gum. Don't smack that stuff. Yeah, no. <laughs> But um, just like, what are those things? And then as far as jackets, like plan. I mean, if you know you're going to a movie, it's cold in the movie. Like, don't expect him to share his jacket. And gentlemen, don't expect that like that's required. But just think about like, okay, I might need a shawl. Another one in the summer and, and springtime that I really love are scarves. Yes. It's something you can Absolutely. tie onto your purse, but you can also wear as like a shawl if it gets cold. So think when you're doing that, make sure you're going for like, linen, cotton, anything plant-based because it will breathe. So when you're outside, it's going to, it's going to breathe. So it won't be too hot, but when you're inside, you're not going to be too cold. I think right. I'm going to flip that, but yeah. still, totally um, but anything like a shop, like I really love like the pashmina scarves and things like that. Favorite. It's just a, a style of them. They're the bigger, bigger rectangle ones. Um, that's a really great way instead of having to carry like an additional jacket, if that's not fully in the plan. So you've planned, right? But you're not so prepped that it's like, oh my God, she's not going home yet. Right. Exactly. And you know, what I really love is that little extra step. Like I was taking a walk yesterday and I heard this uh, mom say to the daughter, she was wearing her husband's jacket over her and everything. And I said to the mom, I heard the mom say to the daughter, look, your dad's very, you know, chivalry to give me his jacket because I was getting cold. And she made a point to just kind of acknowledge it in a loving way to her husband, but also in a way for her daughter to kind of learn to receive that. So, you know, they only had to walk very short distance to their car but it was cute that she really wanted to make a point acknowledge and that's part of the process is acknowledge when your date does something that is caretaking and nurturing and being a little more prepared and so that really resonated with me just thinking about how this lady's walking down the street you know with this jacket that's way too big but she was so pleased with the gesture so that's what is so important yeah and i think it also shows that 
Um, you're responsible and adulting. And if you yeah. can take care of yourself, that's also a characteristic that you're bringing into the relationship. And I know I'm personally huge about this, that, you know, it's not just that they're going to fix you or they're going to make it better. It's what do you bring to the table? What do you have to offer? And I think showing that you can at least get dressed, that's a huge sign. <laughs> that is a good thing. And it also shows, you know, how to do laundry, you know, to carry yourself, you're self-sufficient. Yeah. And I think that that is something too, that, you know, being prepared to be successful on a date is really nice because then you're not distracted. And I've talked about this on other sessions with you on, you know, when you're wearing something that's too big and you're just swimming mm -hmm. in it. And when you're wearing something that's too small and you're just tight and you can't move, you're thinking about your clothes the whole time. You're not thinking about the funny joke they just said. You're not thinking about how great the food is. You're not thinking how much you just totally want to snuggle with that person. You're thinking, I'm awkward. I don't feel good. So really taking the time to practice wear out, wear what you're wearing. Do you like lay out a couple ideas the night before? Do you plan like that morning? Do you kind of have like your first, first date, second date, third date outfit? Or, you know, how do you kind of think about it as guiding clients wise? I know you're really good with your own style, but when you're thinking oh. client wise. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, I was having fun flipping between what do I tell people and what do I do? What do I tell people? Do I do? Yeah. Um, so I like there, when I say this, there's some people, I call them emotional dressers. Uh, I, for them, I would say that they need to have options that day because sometimes you lay something out and then you get to the date and you're like, man, I'm not feeling it, but I already laid it out. Da da da. And then you're just setting yourself up. So right. yes, I like options. Options are great. I think I encourage people, here's how I would say it, wear your go-to outfits, like those outfits that are really signature you, because yeah. you're trying to get this person to get to know you. Don't like dress up because it's a date, like they want to get to know you. So if you show up super dressed up, super polished, you're amazing the first day, the second date, you're just like in your casual wear, totally not you. They're get, not disappointed. They're just trying to figure out where you are and like how you show up and how you yeah. present yourself. So I would say like if you have go-to outfits that you feel good in, make you look good, reference those for the first date. On the second date, maybe step it up versus stepping it down. Yeah. Show them that you can do more. Yeah, and then great. on the third date, go casual and show them you can do less. Show a spectrum. Mm -hmm. I don't think it should be like staged looks for dates. Like this is my first date, second date, third date, because that's not how life works. Right. Um, and the dates might be different. Maybe he takes you for happy hour the first day, the second date, it's just a walk in the park. And then the third date, it's a business meeting that he wants to for you to join him on you need to think too about what it is that you're doing but as far as laying out outfits I really say like we've been saying over and over statement pieces conversation pieces anything that's that go-to you look that's you know so signature somebody might say to me like oh that's such an Ashley look that's gonna be something that I probably would go to and recommend someone else does too because it shows your style if it's recognizable by others Right. And that's true too. Like I, I wear red, black, and white when I'm in work brain mode and it's my company colors, but I notice it across the street. Anytime someone's wearing red, black, and white, I don't even have to be talking to them. It will make me turn my head because it's signature to me. What I think is really interesting is your comment of just, you know, changing the attire, dressing it up. Because in my early years of doing matchmaking, I actually had a lot of kind of complaints of people going, yeah, they looked great on the first date, makeup, earrings put together. Then the second date, no jewelry, no makeup. And it was like, who am I dating? And it wasn't really disappointment. Like you said, it was more of confusion of like, who's going to show up next time. But it felt like they went downward so fast. Mm -hmm. And then it suddenly became something they wanted to be lazy about is how the guys are perceiving it. And for the women, I just feel like they probably did. They tuned it up really high and that was their highest level when they started off and then they couldn't maintain it. And then it was kind of like, well, like me either way. And it's like, they still need time to get to know you well enough to know really what's going on. Yeah. And I like to kind of say this with the most compassion I can with it, but like, would you date you? It's a, it, it, it is a little really harsh. Question. I've asked it's many people, delivery, but it's very true it. of like, would you date you? You know, um, we get very comfortable in life and I'm not saying that 
I'm sorry. There's a lot of people that feel that, you know, excuse me, I'm sorry, that um, fashion has to be in uncomfortable or that it's like, up, you know, up at nose and all this stuff. It's not. When you find fashion that really reflects who you are, you get excited to get dressed. And the truth is it can also motivate you where you are in life, you know, and, and it can attract. Remember how I said like the, bir the birds to the bees? Oh my God. Wrong storyline. I meant the bees to the flowers. Yes. You really want to... The first one does work too, though. No. Yes. <laughs> Anywho, um, when you're doing all of these elements, I think it really helps to just take that extra intention for yourself. Because again, you can't give from an empty cup, right? So if it shows that you're giving to yourself, you're going to be able to give to others. And if we're looking to get a relationship out of this, it's just that next level. It's that next way to show them you know, hey, I put time into me, so you should want to put time into me. And I know you talk about that a lot. Yes, absolutely. And the truth really comes back to is that if a woman knows what she's wearing, she's showing up. <laughs> if she's already got her outfit figured out for that Friday night date, she's going to be there. So you better not cancel on her because she's already bought the shoes to go with the outfit. And it's how our, our minds work. If we already know we're going to feel good and we're going to feel confident, we're going to show up even stronger and we're going to walk in the room stronger. And so you always kind of comment, hey, you know what, they're going to look, make it sure, make sure it's worth their while. What is something that you feel helps people to just kind of have that little extra edge over a little bit of the competition? Let's say you're walking into one of our socials, one of our mingles, and there's going to be 25 other people. And it's easy to kind of pull in and kind of retreat because it's overwhelming. But when you have something that draws people to you, then you can sit down and they can come to you. What would be something that would kind of give somebody a little, a little positive security blanket per se? Yeah, I think number one, count yourself to 10. We talked about that. So you're, you already know that you look like a perfect 10. You already know that maybe you have a pop of color, maybe you have an accent area, the neckline, the arms, the legs, the, you know, something that you're showing off. Um, you already have your conversation starter, all of that. And if you already have all that, it's actually something that, I don't think a lot of people pay attention to, but I freaking love because it's one of those things that when you see it in someone else, you may not be able to pick it out. But the second I point it out, they're always like, yes, oh my God. And it's contrast. Oh yes. What I mean by contrast is it's either wearing like smooth and texture. So it could be that you have a, you know, a nice, a button down shirt with a leather jacket over it, that's texture being leather, being cotton or whatever. It could be that you have pattern and solid. Maybe men, um, you have a pattern shirt underneath a solid blazer. It could be color and neutral. So ladies, maybe it's the bright pink lips. Everything else is super neutral. It could also be like Style wise, I really love to think of contrast. So one of my, my personal go-to favorite looks is casual elegance. I love to wear like diamonds, my best jewelry, anything I have that's super elegant with jeans. Yeah. Or wearing like high heels with jeans, Go, going that um, contrast. So if you're gonna wear something more casual, pair it with something more elegant. Vice versa, if you wear something more elegant, maybe put like a cat, like a black flat with it, something a little bit more casual. I just love those contrasts. So other ones that I love playing with are like rebel chic. So maybe you've got more of that like heavy metal, you know, that awesome blazer jacket thing um, with something more casual and simplistic. Um, it could be, um, professionally casual. A lot of us are coming out after work to go on to a date. So how can you take that suit or that professional look that you have and pair it down with something more casual? So just any type of contrast, um, whatever statement you're trying to aim for, think about how you could be like a mixologist to get to that. I like that. It's all about the recipe. Mm -hmm. And it is so true because you are leaving a date, you know, that, I mean, leaving work to get to a date and you need to decompress. You need to have a different thought. You need to have a different way of going about this, changing your mood, changing your perspective. And I'm, I've always said to ladies and gentlemen, you know, wear your best underwear, not that they're going to see it, but that you just feel sexier all day thinking you're going to go on a date because you've got to change that mind thought from board meeting to to-do list to dealing with your 
staff, you talk different, you behave different. And even if it means you have an outfit that you slip the top change and you, you might not be able to do the whole outfit change, but you can change your top or you could, you know, put on some different shoes, something so that you remember you left work. Cause I think people stay in work mode and then too often I'll hear later about the date and I'm like, that doesn't sound like them. There's nothing fun and nothing exciting. But then I hear, well, when did you guys meet and how much time did you have? Oh, well, we met kind of, you know, during a break during their work or that's why I don't even think you should do a lunch as a first date if it's between a work day because it's too easy to be thinking, I got to get back to work. Like you can't be present. Mm -hmm. And so it does make it difficult. But when you're trying to remind yourself to change, what would be something that you would recommend having in your, in your bag of tricks and your goodies that they could have at work that, you know, maybe they don't have a lot of time to change. There's not really a place to fully make a big difference, but yeah. enough to say, I'm done with work. I'm now on a date. Yeah. Um, okay. So done with work now onto a date. I like really simple, easy things. I call it just refreshing. Like how do you refresh yeah. yourself? So different pair of shoes. Number one, you change your shoes. I swear to God, it's like a whole new day. It is. <laughs> change your shoes. I would say for ladies, I really just the bare minerals of makeup, you know, is it just freshen up your eyeshadow? Maybe it's freshen up your lip. Um, what is it that you can just kind of freshen up on your face? I really love body mists. Um, just something that you can just kind of spray, freshen yourself up. Deodorant is huge. Please have that. Um, and then on the men's side, I think for them, um, depending on what they're wearing to work and how corporate it may be or may not be. You know, if you're a general contractor coming in, I love ruggedy hands. Like give me ruggedy hands any day, but maybe just step up your jeans. So it's a dark wash denim jean with like your work shirt and everything. That's totally fine. If it, you're coming down from the corporate world, maybe keep your button up or button down and blazer on and then throw in jeans or something. Um, mm -hmm. Just again, know what level you remember so we talked about the contrast so if you're super professional casual it down if you're more casual dress it up um as those go-to things though um I'm trying to think again just that sentiment i think right. my my people would have been planning for this from the beginning of the day you know right. so it's like they're already pretty prepped for it like right. i said it's probably just a change of shoes change a jacket yep. one element that they're going to switch up so you know true fashion is when your clothing supports you from 5 a.m. to midnight it's just got to carry you through because so many of us are, you know, maybe we're working moms or we're working dads or something. So you're handling kiddos in the morning, then you're handling professional conference rooms, then you're on a date where you got to look cute and then you're exhausted, right? So like, right. like you said, that, that outfit that doesn't fit, it's going to ruin the day. That's why one thing I would say is like a change of shoes because we all know that second. Like, shoes change is shoes. huge. It's so much. So, so if you have one thing, I would say change your shoes. Choose, change the shoes. I love that. Yeah. Because I notice when somebody comes into an event that we're having on a weeknight, whether it's a happy hour or a mingle, and if they have totally not come down, the first thing they will say is, like, they're still wearing their suit, they're wearing their jacket, they're like, oh, I just finished work. Like, they want to apologize, but they should have probably taken a couple minutes to take the tie off maybe have a different jacket in the car, then they wouldn't have led with that. And I don't think people realize that that's what they're doing, but I've noticed it on multiple occasions. You can completely tell, or they make a neon sign on themselves that says, I just got off work, apologize that I'm looking this way, when really you should be apologizing that you didn't stop and regroup yourself because you're still in work brain mode. You still sound tired. You still sound... Yeah your whole thought process, but changing that one part of the outfit, changing a piece of you, changing the shoes, like you're talking about is really just so crucial because it'll change your mind to think, okay, now I'm done with work. I want to be in a date mode. But when you look like you're still in work mode, it's really hard for somebody to kind of flirt up with you when you keep bringing up that, yeah, I'm in my tie because I just got done with work. Like you're still bringing the work energy in. So it's amazing how the clothing actually brings the energy with you when you really could have taken a moment to let it go. Yeah. And I think it's, you know, what I, the way I see it and I'm kind of a creative, but I think it's called dressing the exhale. It's like that. Oh, I like that. Oh. Dress the exhale. You guys need to write yeah, that and it's like, That's a Guys point. do it this way. Guys like unbutton the first two buttons yeah. and then they kind of like either scrunch their sleeves I like or that. they just like somehow exhale through their clothes. Mm -hmm. 
And, and then women, you know, they often kick off their shoes. You'll see that. Like the second they kick off their shoes, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like, did you just want to exhale as like your first impression? Like, I don't think it's like, <sighs> <laughs> just kind of offensive, right? It's kind of like, yeah. oh, like, hi. <laughs> like, so oh, I geez. think you're right. But, you know, even dressing for the exhale, roll up the sleeves, unbutton the shirt, be relaxed, grab the cocktail, grab the drink, grab the soda, whatever you need to do, but just refresh yourself. And like you're saying, change your mind because I think it's all about, you know, how do you want to interact with the world around you? What statement do you want to make? And what are you trying to align yourself with? Uh, one thing I like to think about is like, really, really random here, but it, I feel like the world is kind of like a casting call. Every day we're out in the world looking for different opportunities. Now each director, AKA the universe, karma, the world, however you want to think of it is looking for a certain part. They need a, you know, the look, the feel, the ambiance of this character. And you're just kind of seeing if you align and it's nothing against you. If you don't, it's just looking to see which character are you best aligned to be with. And now it's not something about playing someone you're not. It's about finding your authentic essence and seeing which director you best align with. And think of it like that. As far as dating the, the man or woman that you're looking to date already has this kind of mental picture of this character who would fit well in their life. And if your authentic essence aligns with that, you're going to get the part, AKA you're going to get the date. And it's not, again, know this. It is not about being something you're not. It's just think about that role. Who do you want to be in this relationship? How do you want to show up? What do you want to contribute? Because I'm sorry, you are not getting in a relationship for them to fix you, make you whole, or make you better in some way. That just, that's <laughs> not their job. Well, like, like dating someone for a job, that is yeah. not good. People do it all the time. You know, oh, I, I'm an introvert. I want an extrovert because they'll get me out. But that's yeah. not your job to do. You need to work on you. Go to Toastmas. Go to your things. Do stuff to show that you're investing in you and then will make you more attractive. Yeah, and I think it's just think about that, like who's out there looking for you? What would he or she be wanting? And how do you fit that mold or how do you not fit that? Like, mm -hmm. I think a big thing too is stripping labels. I think that, you know, we think we should, could, would, and all this. Mm -hmm. And it's just taking that away and just realizing we are enough as we are and who we are is enough and that the right person is going to cherish that and ask for more of that, not yes. less. And so finding that and just knowing that if not now, the next one is, and if not now, something better. Yes. And I actually think it's really important for how many times I, as a matchmaker, have had people come to me later after a date going... I wish I could do that again. I just, my head wasn't in it. I was still thinking of this. I didn't like what I was wearing. Like I just didn't feel good or I wasn't, I didn't, I should have gotten that haircut. You know, it's just that being prepared. Like I know if I let my gray grow out, I'm thinking about my gray and I know the other person doesn't even notice it, but I'm thinking about it. Like yeah. if you keep postponing these grooming and personal care things and that moment comes, we're not a game. We're not showing up. And if we really want a partner that's got the A game, we have to also have it. But too many people keep thinking that they don't really need to show up, but the other person does. And I'm like, no wonder you're missing ships in the night here, people. Or also don't lose yourself in a relationship. Oh, I'm going to say, I, I'm going to call myself out on this one. This is one of my weak, uh, weaknesses, but you know, I've had long hair because they liked long hair. Mm -hmm. I've had nails done a certain way because they like that way. You know, find somebody that's going to like your way. Yeah. Uh, point, you know, pretty direct to the point there on that one. Yeah. But, um, huge. It's just, you know, this whole idea of shooting all over yourself. Like, oh, and, and then you said something, oh my God, we have to talk about this. The haircut right before the date. Oh my God. <laughs> don't. <laughs> not the same day, but don't go to the point where you know it looks shaggy. No, yeah, it's not even it. that. It's like, gentlemen, definitely get your hair cut. But I'm talking like the women that have long hair and then decide to get a pixie cut yes. five minutes before the date. <laughs> Oh my God. Like I can be having this. So this spring fever affects everyone a little differently, but especially in my work right now, I'm doing a lot of photo shoots and helping clients prep for photo shoots. And the same is true for dates. Like, okay, this should go without saying, but apparently we need to make a public announcement of this. Do not do facial injections. Don't do massive haircuts, colors, or dyes. Don't like, 
get a tattoo <laughs> five seconds before a date. Like, guys, they liked you from what they've already seen. Right. You don't have to be more. You don't have to be less. Like, be your dang self. <laughs> like, exactly. It's just funny. A few of the photo shoots I've had to reschedule because – girl lost her mind. <laughs> I was like, what happened? It's amazing that anxious energy makes you do something impulsive, but really it actually backfires. Yeah. And, you know, love yourself all the way. Just keep up with yourself so that you're not so far gone that you're like showing up and four nails are broken and you're like, God, I really should have done my nails, you know, last week or the other day. Yeah. And you grooming, I think is up. huge too with, with the summer coming, you know, there's a lot of grooming. A, we're going to be showing more of our skin. Make sure we shave all the right parts. Right. You know? It's hotter, so we're all going to be perspiring more. Make sure we've got that covered. Uh, light colors or extreme dark colors help with the sweaty armpits. Mm -hmm. uh, so think about that. Don't wear, like, a red shirt and sweat in it. Oh, my God, it's horrible. Just don't. <laughs> not um, a good thing. And then don't, like, sit back like this. You know, like, no right. one needs to see that. Like, that's yeah. not good on anyone. Just don't. Um, I love that you're bringing this up because I remember so many years ago, I got asked out on a date to go out on a boat and go, it was Detroit Lake, and this guy asked me, and you know, all I kept thinking was, I don't have a swimsuit that looks good on me, and I turned it down, and I remember I was so focused on that, and I couldn't find the right swimsuit when I could have come up with something, but I let the outfit get me to say no. And it was a long time ago, but it still pops in my mind. So it's like, take the time to go get these things ahead of time before the date comes up. So that when you are with somebody and they say, Hey, you want to go out on the boat? You're like, yes, I do. And I'm going to look cute, whatever it is. But I was more self-conscious that, Oh, my tummy's not quite flat enough. And I didn't want him to see me when obviously he already liked me. We'd already been on a bunch of dates. Yeah. So, and I, I think something. We say it in business, do you have everything you need for the success you want? And I think it translates into relationships in, do you have everything to say yes to the date you want? So one thing I'm thinking, if somebody wanted to fly me to France right now, I don't have a current passport. I need to update yes. that. So it's like, think about little things. Like, do you want to travel? Okay, great. So you want to travel, but do you have a passport? Right. We can all like call me out on that one, right? Like, I it's love it. So true. Thing. So like even the bathing suit, are you capable of doing summer and spring activities in all different ways. Like, do you have good running shoes? Do you have good, like, if he wants to say we're going hiking, do you have good hiking wear? Right. Um, my hiking wear would be like the picnic basket with the wine holder. Now I don't care if yours is like hiking shoes and mine's a basket, but just right. like you have everything you need to make for the date that you want. So I think that's a great point to bring up. Um, other things to think about would be like, um, is there space in your life for them, including in the closet? Yes, actually, that's a big thing. I talk about that, and I just had a client bring it up the other day. She goes, remember that assignment you gave me about, I always say, at least have one drawer where they can have, you know, their bathroom, some clothes, some shoes, whatever, just something that's theirs. And even if you don't have your person yet, make an empty drawer to show the universe you're making space for somebody. And she actually kind of, it had been a year ago since she did this homework and she's been in a relationship for six, seven months. And she stops and kind of goes, I don't really have anything. I've not made room for him. He comes over, he stays over all the time, but he packs it all up and leaves. And she had not consciously made the space and now she has. And it just felt more commitment orientated also. And I hear it so many times. I one of my clients, he goes, I know I'm going to date a woman that likes a lot of clothes. So he made extra room in his closet so that there would be room when the time came. I love it. Yeah. And while we're in the closet, I would say, you know, make a mental checklist of your collections. And what I mean by that is, do you have a good dress collection? Do you have a good clothing collection, both casual and dressy and professional and active wear? Do you have good shoe collections? collection? Do you have accessory collections? Like, do you, you know, I got rid of some things the other day and I was just like, how long do I plan on storing this? Right. I don't wear any of it. Like, what am I doing? Like, I'm just storing this for the day that's probably not going to come. Exactly. So one thing I tell people is when you go into your wardrobe, it better be speaking sweet nothings to you. I mean, if it's talking down to you or like, you can't fit me, you don't, you're not the size for me. Like, oh yeah. Take anything out that speaks negatively to you that says, <laughs> you know, you're too big for me or you're too small for me or I don't want to work with you today and I'm going to hug your body wrong and like make you in a bad mood. Take that stuff out. Like, 
I get it. Someday we're all going to go on a diet and someday we're all going to be two inches taller and someday we're going to get it dry clean and tailored. Mm -hmm. But I'm tired of that someday. Let's yeah. just do Day. Like, right. What is your real life? If you're not into going and getting a tailor to dry clean, give it to somebody who will. I know. <laughs> and then you're just, you're holding out on someone's goodwill find. Okay. Like, come yeah. on. Pretty we good. all have them. Well, and that's actually a really powerful one because on a matchmaking coaching level, I'm always telling people you, you have to let go of stuff too. So if you're keeping that favorite outfit because your ex really liked you in it, you're keeping it because you know that once you get rid of that, you know, winter wave, it's going to look great again. You know, I love how you're talking about your clothing talks to you too, is it talks to your date, talks to how your energy is on a date. If you keep it around, you're just storing emotions in this room. And every time you open the door, it's like that, oh, achy, achy. And who wants to get dressed around all of that pain and suffering? And oh, you just left? said something that I like literally almost threw up a little bit. You were like that X outfit. Yeah. Oh, like. You know what's so funny is your face um, froze. Your face froze when you did no that. It was ex classic. Outfit. <laughs> Good. I hope they all love that. That, that was, was special. So that was you were in like the most painful expression, and the, your your internet thing totally froze. It was classic, but that's exactly like the internet. I can move energy. <laughs> I can move energy too. It's amazing <laughs> when I feel it. I knock out cell phones. I knock yeah. out internet. It's amazing. But it's this, it's the, yeah, feel, so, you know, I'm passionate about it if I'm right. freezing the internet, right. but it's just this idea. The other one I really want to talk about is the, my favorite thing. And it always makes me go, oh, well now is the people that hang outfits, like they put the same pants, same top, same jacket together on a hanger in their closet. And that's the only way they ever wear it. Oh, people still do that. Oh, did not know that. People, it creates <laughs> options. Like, stop it. My favorite thing, especially in spring right now, this is a great thing to do. So go through your wardrobe, and I like to set it up as I get dressed. So whether think about this. How do you get dressed? Do you start with the pants? Do you start with the top? Like, how do you, what's the first thing you go to to make an outfit? Put that there, then put the next phase. So like maybe you're, I'm a top girl. I always start with my tops. Then I build the bottoms. Then I go to the shoes. So my wardrobe is laid out kind of like a buffet line. The mm. next thing is organize it by sleeve length. Because the weather's changing right now, some days it's going to be cooler. Other days it might be warmer. So go like tank tops into short sleeves, into long sleeves. So you know, based on the weather, what you're going to pull out and what you're going to be wearing. It's a good way if like you have your wardrobe organized by color, it's a good way to just switch it up to see things in a new way and be re-inspired by your wardrobe. And it gets stagnant and, and boring. Like move right. that stuff around, like have yeah. fun there. Um, that's a powerful one. I was just talking to someone who's a professional organizer and she said she just organize her client's closet like a rainbow like the shades of the rainbow and and it was just she has so many colors that it helped to actually hone in on the color the client would want versus it being all mix mashed yeah I mean that's a, that's a different approach and it still works a lot of people you know that want diversity in their wardrobe might have multiple colors and things um and it's a good way I do that too but um I usually do like my neutral tones, so it's like white, blue, gray, black, and then my color items. Right. Um, but again, you have to know what you need from your wardrobe, so that would be more specific to each person, but I, it definitely works that way to do it by color. It, it, it would flip it. So if you've done it by sleeve length, then I would tell you now do it by color. Mm -hmm. um, it, it freshens it up. Like, cut your clothes, say hello, make friends. Yeah. And just leave them in there to be rotten and eaten by moths. Like, that's not very nice. Well, and it also helps remind you what you actually have. And sometimes, you know, you lost a little bit of weight and you're kind of like, gosh, you know what? I think that outfit looks really cute on me now. Or, you know what? I've been needing a pair of shoes. That's the only reason I haven't worn that dress is I don't have the shoes. Well, now go get the shoes or get rid of the dress. Yeah, you know, or help a friend out. Pieces. Yeah, help a friend out. Give it to a friend. Like, she's already in that body size that you're not and maybe she has something for you or vice versa like right. um just because it doesn't fit you doesn't mean that you can't gift it to someone else exactly and that's, that's like awesome. oh my friend she's so amazing she always gives me these clothes i love it so much instead of having a wardrobe that like talks back to you that's yeah funny. exactly i was just thinking that my sister had just um 
had a weight change and a friend of hers had just had a career change. And one day years ago, they had me come over and the friend was, oh my God, she has so much clothing and it was amazing. It was the ultimate shopping experience with no, no money out of hand. But I left with such beautiful suits that fit me, all of these dresses, tops and bottoms. I had them until they all ran out of style. But it was such a nice thing just to go and get a complete wardrobe reboot because they were things that they weren't going to be enjoyed by either of these lovely ladies, and I was able to go in and enjoy that. And that's what it's about, is just making it work for whoever it's supposed to work for, but only having things that are productive. So that makes a big difference because you're moving forward in your life with your dating and relationship connections. Yeah, and I had, I was at a women's event the other day, and I complimented someone's look, and she said something that I, I just, I You'd be shocked that I hadn't heard this before, but she goes, oh, thanks. I only have cute clothes. And I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. Like I need to do that. Like there are some things even in my wardrobe as the stylist, that's not necessarily as cute as it could be. And I was like, what a great like confidence booster. If all you have are cute things every day you get dressed, you don't have to worry about it. It's kind of like that minimalistic um, uh -oh, capsule wardrobe where mm -hmm. like you only have so many things, but no matter how you put it together, it always works. Right. So I was kind of challenging myself the last couple of days, like picking things out. Are you cute? No. Are you cute? Yes. Okay. Okay. Exactly. I'm like, if it wasn't cute, I'd just get rid of it. And exactly. it's so fun because now I'm like, I only have cute clothes too. <laughs> right. And you, you feel better. You perk up when you think about it. So I love it. Love it. Now we're almost out of time. So before we wrap it all up, what are your last words of wisdom to tie this awesome class up? Cause I know our members are like, hold on, I gotta go do this. And I gotta go talk to my clothes and I need to get a yeah. lot of with my clothing. I feel a lot of people are beelining towards their wardrobe yeah. right now. They're <laughs> like, running their wardrobe through their head. Like, oh, yeah. there goes one more, one more, one more hanger. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to just go back and like replay pause, replay pause, replay pause. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, I want to bring up something that we brought up in the last video of visibility that, you know, it's okay to be visible. And I think that, you know, if you're wanting to attract your soulmate, if you're wanting to attract love into your life, you have to be seen. They're not going to dig through all the wallflowers to find you. They're not going to come to your front door knocking and, you know, the cat answers as your butler to let him in. That's not right. how that works. No. So just be confident, be excited, be visible, be ready to be seen, be seen at your best and know people stare. So make it worth their while. And just, I think visibility is huge, you know, um, just prepping for that. I think that would be the final thing I say. Just be ready to be seen because that means you're going to find your bee to the flower that much faster. Right. Perfect. And that's what it is. Building that confidence, owning it, being prepared to be successful in dating just as we're prepared to be su successful in so many other aspects. And I feel so strongly that taking those few moments and listening to your tips is going to make it where they can be more present on the date and at least if they're not your person, you left a lasting impression, and that's what makes such a difference. And I would say, know that we're a team here, you know? Know that they can reach out to you and ask for advice and reach out to me as well, and just know that, you know, a text message, I love those text messages. They're always around 4.35 of, like, half-dressed people that come through on my phone saying, like, what else should I wear? Right. I love that. I'm always like, add pants, please. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you appreciate the pants. You don't have to see them right now, but they are good to have on. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's, it's, it's such a difference. Like I recently went shopping. A friend of mine has been pushing me to like try different things and she was just adamant. And then I put on these skinnier jeans and she's all like, uh, you just lost 10 pounds. I thought you were heavier than you are because I've been wearing bigger pants. I just hadn't taken the time to go shopping. But boy, even I was out with somebody and I was wearing heels for the first time and he stops and he just kind of goes, you walk differently when you're in heels. And I'm like, heck yeah, I do. And I had just been wearing flats so much, I forgot how much stronger, more confident walking in my heels go for me. So a lot of people are always saying they don't want to do these extra little things they've gotten comfortable, but sometimes we have to push ourselves because then the you in you shows up. Like you really can shine when you just take that extra something. Absolutely. Um, I love fashion. I think it's, you know... I think it's the armor to life. Mm -hmm. I just, I want to be prepped and ready. And I'm not saying it's a battle out there, but it's not easy. And <laughs> so I think it's just, you know, being seen and, and making people hither, you know, because you put time and effort into your look. And so they want to take time and effort into getting to know you. And um, 
I just think, you know, it's, it's one of the only things in our life that we have 100% control over. And it just seems like too many people don't value that. And it's like, come on guys, we already know you can't go naked. I mean, you can, but they're, that's a different night. Right. And then it's just like, take time. Exactly. Take the time, put the effort, invest in yourself. It doesn't cost a ton to look good. It just, mm -hmm. it's about the time. It's about the thinking about it. It's having the right mind thought. It's being present on your date and whatever you can do to be unforgettable. So I thank you so much, Ashley. This was great. I'm excited for what we have for next quarter. And I know our listeners are going to keep hitting rewind, rewind, re take notes and repeat because these are huge golden nuggets to definitely make a difference and i just want everyone to bite onto this and run because that little bit of change you're going to walk in with a different attitude to your next date or social activity or just meeting up with friends because you never know you're going to meet when you're just out and about it's true <laughs> very much so all righty well thank you again and i'm excited for what we have next time